Oh, there we go. All right, that's a fish. Nice fish. Yes, dude. Man, that fish feels big and heavy. Today might be the only day of the week that's fishable because of all the wind swell we've been having. Casting and cranking and all of a sudden all these bait fish started jumping out of the water right in front of me. And they were heading towards me, like towards the sand. So something was in there chasing them right in front of me. So I backed up. I got out of the water. Okay, so I'm wading out as far as I can, looking for a hole in the kelp, and then bombing my bait into the hole. Let's wait for this wave to pass. And then we'll try to drop it right in that hole right there that I'm looking at. Okay, that's good. Boom. Yeah. And I just had a hit on my last cast. So let's see what happens. So we believe John is on a fish here, but he's wrapped up in the kelp. We're working really hard for a bite. We still haven't landed a fish yet. All right, that's a fish. I'm on. He's turning a little drag there. Nice fish. Look this cat. We were just talking. I saw you set that hook, man. I saw your rod then. Just talking and then bam. Happening. Calico or a halibut? Looks like it could be a halibut. That looks more like a halibut to me, man. Yeah, land that halibut, dude. You never know, dude. It could be a big one. Is it so heavy? Oh, dude, you might have a keeper halibut on. Let's see what let's see what comes up right now. It's always fun to see what comes up. You never know. Coming in pretty quick. Not that quick. Uh, I mean, maybe it's because you have a lighter rod. I crank them in so fast. What does he got? What does he got? Yeah, but thank you for doing that, man. Oh man, yeah. Good work, John Matsubu. Get this guy in the back of the See what I'm doing here? Just ever so slowly. Keep my rod on my forearm. If you can see that, keep my rod on my forearm is the best place to have it for sensitivity. <clears throat> sensitivity and flexibility. I'm on. Just turn a little drag here. Something, something very strong, guys. Something very strong. He's on the surface. Uh, he's on the surface. Am I towing in a... I think I'm towing in a fish with kelp. I wonder if it's a halibut. Man, that felt good to get that bite. My shoulder hurts. It looks like a halibut the way it's coming in. It looks like it might be a keeper too. That might be my 22, dude. Not quite, not quite illegal. Oh, that felt good. Oh man, that felt good. There we go, that's the way to throw the skunk right there. After a long fish. Bye bye. That was nice to throw the skunk and finally catch a fish today. Beautiful little halibut. Just slow rolling on bottom. Nice and steady. Slow, low and steady guys. Slow, low and steady. And that's exactly how that bite came. I was just doing this, nice and steady. And then pop, just felt that pop. Overall summary here is like, I'm, I'm, ooh, what was that? What was that? I'm enjoying the fishing. Ooh, dude, that was a yank. That was a yank and a half. Oh my God, did you guys see that? 
dang, right on that reef. Whew. That was a yank and a half. And I just wasn't ready for it for some reason. He got the bait, he got the hook out of my bait. Dude, wow, let's see if we can make that happen again. Right in front of us, there's this, there's this reef rock. There's like this reef. It's super deep over here. We gotta bury the tip because the water is quite dirty. I wanna keep it down. I wanna keep that hook tip pointed down towards another rib. So there's, see that little bit of kelp right there? There's a little reef, so I just sort of short casted it. And then just do that super, super slow crawl. That super slow crawl right up in against that reef. I feel, there's like tap, 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 tap. That's probably just like kelp. Oh wait, wait, that is a fish, that's a fish. That is the fish that just probably, that just bit. Woo, woo! Oh, now he's wrapped up. Oh, coming, no, 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 no. Stay on, stay on, stay on, stay on. Oh, dude, he came off. Dude. Oh, dude. Dang, that would have made such awesome video. Like, I love the way I got a bite on one cast and then I threw it back out and got that fish on the next cast. Yeah, hook tip still sharp. Just must not have been hooked very deeply. Let's try to make that happen one more time. I don't think that fish is gonna bite again. And this spot looks so damn fishy. Look at this. Would you look at it? Just look at it. Oh man, I really like this spot. I could just see a big, I could just imagine a huge halibut coming out of here. Something picked up my bait, <laughs> like not even far out. Just see that piece of kelp right in front of us right there? I'm gonna short cast to it. Boom, right there. Something picked up my bait right in there. Had it in his mouth, was just kind of swimming around. But the thing that I am seeing today that's not good is like there's this weird green dust in the water. I've seen it here before. I think it comes off of the kelp when kelp is growing and dying back and stuff like that. So there's this weird green stuff in the water and it even washes up onto the beach like oil. You know how oil gets deposited on the beach? It gets the, this green stuff gets deposited on the beach just like that. It looks a little foamy though, kind of foamy and green. And I'm wondering what the heck that stuff is. It's gross, whatever it is. And maybe that is what's putting down the bite. Maybe it's not so much the cold water. Maybe it's that stuff that's making it hard for us to find fish today. There is, the water clarity is, water clarity is, you know, it's, there's, there's some clarity. There's a more than enough clarity to it for fishing. It's like a good 12 inches of clarity. It's fine for catching halibut. But that green color, that green tint, that's really got me, that's got my concern. That's what I'm interested in learning more about. So if you can tell me anything about this green stuff in the water, I'd like to know more, thanks. Fish, there's a spider. Man, my, old, my shoulder can barely keep up with this stuff. I'm really trying to go for that structure right there. I'm trying to dive into that rock. It's pretty heavy fish. It is a pretty heavy fish. I'm thinking that might be a grass, it's grassy because it's so heavy. Probably either a calico or a grassy. Look at that hook set right in the lower lip. Right there. You wanna get a photo? Yeah. That hook. Such a great hook. Nice fish. Oh man, sure enough. Really beautiful cast. And then I got a bite. I got a really nice bite. Um, he just grabbed it and yank. It was a really good yank. And then like, uh, I didn't set the hook in time. I, I felt the tap and I lifted my rod tip to see if it was a fish and it went yank. So I, when I felt that tap, I should have just set the hook. So I'm borrowing this rod. It's a Shimano Skimitar. And it is a nine foot heavyweight. Power is heavy, action is moderate. Not fast, moderate. The lure weight is one half ounce to one and a half ounce. And it says it's rated for 10 to 30 pound line. This rod belongs to David Siordia. He's letting me borrow it. So you may have noticed we did a fundraiser for Daniel Navarro last month, and we raised over $400. We got him this rod that's on the way. We got him a Daiwa Fuego 4000. We got him a bunch of Texas rig swim baits. 
some Battlestar Turfets, just all kinds of stuff. Everything he's gonna need. Everything he needs. The bullet weights, the bobber stoppers, the we got a, a bunch of braided line. Um, been there caught that, sent him a box of jigs and more braided line. Thank you, been there caught that. So pretty awesome thing that took place. And the, the North Coast rods just aren't coming in from Daiwa very quickly. We're waiting and waiting and waiting. So that's why I said, dude, take my rod. It's a Daiwa North Coast. It's an old one. At least you'll get to see what it's like to fish with this rod. And just hold on to it until the new one comes in. And then I didn't have a rod, so I hit up David and said, can I borrow your surf rod? He said, sure, borrow it as long as you want. I'm not using it. So, the Shimano Kimitar is a good rod. I'd say that it's actually really good for what we're doing. It's a $50 rod. Only thing is it's really front heavy, top heavy. So I'm finding my, I have to choke up all the way to here. I'm holding the rod all the way up here. Maybe that's because I have such a lightweight reel on this rod. Maybe with a heavier reel, it'll balance out, but I'm just choking way up to get the, to, so that the rod tip balances up. And then I'm not doing a lot of work to, with my wrist to keep it there. And it's working out great. So for 50 bucks, yeah, Shimano Skimitar is a good option. I guess I like it better than the Okuma Connoisseur for the $50 range because the Connoisseur does not have nearly as much sensitivity. The Shimano Skimitar has way more sensitivity. All right, so one thing I got to say about the Texas rig, it is the most complex rig to rig up the way I do it. And it's also the best rig that you can possibly fish with in a surf. So it's worth it. Take the time to rig up Texas. Get your bobber stopper on there if you're going to be fishing through kelp and really heavy structures so your, so your bullet weight stays pinned. Get some, uh, make sure you're using a weighted hook so it glides horizontally and snags way less. Get some juice on there and go fishing. You're gonna really be glad that you're fishing with the Texas rig. Oh, he got in the kelp, dude. He got in the kelp. He's on that piece of structure. Come on, swim out. There you go. Oh, he's off, he's off. He kicked him off. Damn, that was a heavy one. Was that a heavy fish or what? Woo, you saw that hook set, huh? <laughs> that was cool. Yeah. Yeah, just right on that piece of structure that I was... Yeah, just... I think I cast it just to the right of it. It felt heavy like a grassy or a calico. Big and heavy. Probably another big old grassy. Dude. So... I... I made this really nice cast. And I was fishing and then John casted it straight over my line. So we were crossed. Or, or I was over him or something. So I was like, dude, am I over you? So I was like, here, let me let me come over you. So I was walking towards him and I was going to move my rod to the other side and I felt tap. And so I set the hook and John saw the whole thing. He's standing right behind me. It was pretty awesome. But yeah, that fish got wrapped up in kelp really quick. And then, uh, and then we lost him. But it was a big, heavy fish. Yes, dude. Man, that fish feels big and heavy. Oh yeah, here it comes. Here it comes. Big and heavy. What is this? A huge grassy? It's on the surface. If he's that heavy, it's probably a big grassy. Or a huge out of it. He's on the surface. Yeah. Oh, dude, that. Is that a huge grassy or a big hell of it? Damn, my shoulder is barely keeping up. Oh, dude, that might be a halibut. That might be a keeper halibut, dude. Oh, it could be a short with a bunch of kelp on it. It's a short with a bunch of kelp. That's why it's so heavy. Woo! All right, two, two shorties today. Texas rig, guys. Look at that hook set. That is what I call victory. That is the victory hook. The Battlestar victory hook. That's a prototype right there. I made that one at home. That's 
the hook, and I just added the quarter ounce of weight to it. Man, it works like a charm. You're gonna love fishing Texas rig. You can do things with it you can't do with any other bait. Power bait. Wow. Grassy or calico? Really big. Wow, dude, I'd love to see your rod bend. Oh, my man. I was just handling it. I was having some line troubles. And then I heard John say, there we go. Come on, come on out of the kelp. Come on out of the kelp. Come to Papa. Yeah, dude. Come on, yes, dude, he's coming to you. He's coming, you got him, you got him. What are you looking at? Oh, big ass grassy. Oh, whoa, is that a halibut? What in the world is that? It's really long. Oh yeah, it is a grassy. I was like, dude, that thing looks like an eel. <laughs> Wait, it's a calico. That is a nice calico, dude. Yeah. All right, there's John's fish. Fish. Yes, dude. Man, that fish feels big and heavy. 